Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Trusted CI webinar for April 22nd, 2024. I'm your host, Jeanette Dopheide. Trusted CI is the NSF Cybersecurity Center of Excellence, and these webinars are part of its mission to deliver high-quality, actionable guidance regarding cybersecurity to the NSF community. More information about Trusted CI can be found at trustedci.org. Today's topic is fear, security and privacy heterogeneous environment for reproducible experimentation with Dr. Yelena Merkovich and uh, David Balanson. David is um, on the call in the background. He'll be available for Q&A. So uh, just know that he's there. Uh, Yelena is a principal Sorry, Yelena is a principal scientist at USC ISI and a research associate professor at USC. And David is the senior supervising computer scientist and associate director of the networking and cybersecurity division at USC ISI. Before we begin, I have a few things to note. First of all, this presentation is being recorded. Um, second, participants are welcome to ask questions during the session using the chat box available. And we'll probably have question, uh, time at the end for questions as well. And with that, I will hand things over to Yelena. Yelena, welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining in. I'm happy to talk today with you about Sphere. Uh, Sphere is our recently funded effort. We're about six months into four-year project to build cybersecurity and privacy uh, research infrastructure for reproducible experimentation. And I'm showing our project team. I'm the lead PI, Brian Kokoloski is the co-PI from USC ISI, and David Chofnes from Northeastern University is also our PI. Um, and David Balanson, who is on the call, is our outreach director. Alba Regalado is our project manager. Daniel Dubois is uh, tech lead from Northeastern. And we have a bunch of other folks that uh, that are helping out with the project. Some are subject experts um, and some are helping with the management. The motivation for Sphere um, is that cyber threats today affect every aspect of our life. They are very frequent and very damaging and the researchers are uh, and defenses are lagging behind the threats. Uh, because research solutions are simplistic, piecemeal, and opportunistic, and slow to reach the market. And this mostly happens because every research uh, lab works on data sets and on equipment that they have. They build something, and it's very hard for others to reproduce it, even when everything is published and the code is released. It's hard for others to reproduce the results because the uh, experimentation in cybersecurity and privacy is very complex. And so even if you release your code and your data, there, the devil is in the details. Uh, so reproducibility is low and therefore our research solutions are quite naive. So what community needs is common, rich, representative research infrastructure that meets the needs across all members of the community. That includes researchers, uh, entrepreneurs, um, and educators, um, and novices that are just looking to get into this area. Um, and this research infrastructure should facilitate reproducible science. It should actually help people doing experiments on the infrastructure to package these experiments and to share them in a way that others can easily reproduce them. And if we had that, then we would enable vertical progress in these important fields of cybersecurity and privacy. And that would lead to integrated research when we can build on results that have been there in the past and we can reuse experiments, reuse the tools and the, and the technologies and then improve them. Um, we proposed Sphere research infrastructure uh, with heterogeneous hardware resources uh, that when we surveyed the research in uh, literature in the field, in the top conferences, we uh, came up with the resources, uh, the hardware resources that would meet needs of 90% of published research today. Um, and we propose multiple user port portals. I'll give you more details in the following slides. We also proposed some incentives and processes to include the community in design and operation of Sphere and help them use, help them build these reproducible um, processes, reproducible habits in the community, because really community needs to buy in this whole story that we need to have this integrated science and, and science that, that, that releases its results in a way that's easily reproducible. 
Um, so uh, this is the overall architecture and I'll be going over it uh, piece by piece. We propose multiple types of hardware resources. Uh, there are general compute nodes that can be used for simulations and emulations uh, for research on network, uh, cloud computing security, and also system uh, security. There are embedded compute nodes uh, such as can be found in phones and tablets, and they are uh, useful for research on distributed threats or threats on distributed computing um, and attacks on specific CPU architectures. Cyber physical nodes, we proposed some PLCs and also software um, that, that would uh, drive those and provide digital twin um, uh, material for the PLCs to run. Um, and these uh, are good for research on uh, threats on industrial systems and critical infrastructure. We proposed some GPU nodes. They are used for machine learning in the loop. So if someone is running an experiment and is supposed to observe some traffic or some threats and then perform some learning uh, in the, in, on the fly and then implements maybe some defenses um, in real time, then, then GPU nodes can be used for that. And also programmable nodes can be used for that. So we proposed some net FPGAs and some programmable switches. They are used, uh, usually used in the community to implement defenses and to prototype them. And these such defenses are easily transitioned to market because they run in the same hardware that is used in, in the commercial networks. Um, IoT nodes, uh, there, there is a big enclave uh, in Northeastern University uh, denoted in pink here on the, on the picture. Uh, that will house smart home nodes and personal devices. There, there will be several hundreds of those and great variety, and they will be remotely accessible and remotely operable. So you'll be able to set up these devices and then study threats to security and privacy that affect IoT devices. Um, and this uh, entire infrastructure will be connected by dedicated network links. So you'll be able to use multiple nodes um, and connect them into a single experiment. Um, and we are also proposing uh, flexible security policies so that uh, some experimentation will need to be closed off the internet, but other experimentation could be open to read and reach out to the internet for software installation or reach out for measurement or reach out and include human subjects that will test some new technology on the on sphere infrastructure. Uh, we also proposed uh, two ways to support reproducibility. One is representative experimentation environments, or REEs. Uh, we view these as very mature research artifacts, such as tools for simulation or emulation or entire experiments uh, that have been very uh, well developed by their authors and uh, made realistic to, to reproduce real, real world. Um, and we view those as something that could become standard for experimentation in a given uh, field, a subfield of cybersecurity and privacy. Um, and we have funds on the project to pay uh, for a few months of students' time to integrate that research artifact that is mature and, and used by others into Sphere so that that could uh, lead to more uh, reusability and, and actually standardize experimentation in that field of science. Uh, we also proposed a research artifact library where anyone who experiments on Sphere could, could store their artifacts. Um, and we propose to work with artifact evaluation committees that currently um, evaluate artifacts for uh, conferences and journals, but on just like lab resources that the evaluator has. Uh, we proposed to work with them to help them work with Sphere and then the artifacts would re remain on Sphere and would be easily reusable. Uh, we proposed multiple portals for different types of users to access Sphere. I'll go quickly through that. Uh, there is a manual portal that most people are familiar with. That means you get your resources and your SSH into them and you manually configure them and play with them. And that's really good when you are just building your experiment. You don't know what you want to do. You're trying different things. So manual access is needed. 
We proposed Jupyter uh, notebooks. Um, these will uh, be supported for uh, to support more experienced users and scripted experimentation. Once you have a mature experiment and you want to script it and run it multiple times and change some parameters, uh, Jupyter notebooks are, are great for that and are also standard in our community. Uh, many uh, research infrastructures support them. Uh, for scripted experimentation. We also proposed the uh, graphical user interface where novice users could come and actually uh, build experiment and run it without really touching the, the command line interface or Jupyter. Um, and this would help novice users learn how to use the infrastructure. It would help them understand what the infrastructure can do before they can graduate to, to manual port or, or, or Jupyter port. Um, and we also proposed some special portals to support special types of use. Um, human uh, portal uh, that is uh, shown here with, with, uh, and denoted with number four will support human studies uh, where you have some new security or privacy solution deployed on Sphere and you want human users to interact with that solution and you want to record some aspects of that interaction or ask them survey questions once the interaction has ended to see how they liked it. Um, so, so that portal will offer special functionalities for that kind of use. Um, Artifact Evaluation Committee portal will support evaluation of artifacts for conferences and journals. And we're currently working on that, uh, integrating these, um, these functionalities with hot CRP so that uh, this portal will most likely have the interface that is integrated with hot CRP so that you can request resources through that and access them. And you don't really have to get familiar deeply with the, with the uh, sphere and other portals. Um, and then we propose the education portal, um, and that is supporting the students and teachers that use fear in um, classroom to uh, for homeworks or for um, uh, competition activities. Um, and that, in addition to giving access to resources, also provides uh, teachers with the ability to load their class materials, students to access their homework materials, um, and to submit uh, submit answers. Um, so I'll give you just brief history of Sphere. Uh, Sphere is growing over uh, from multiple efforts at USC, ISI and Northeastern University over uh, several decades. At USC, ISI, we ran and operated the Ter Lab, uh, which was the testbed for cybersecurity research over past 20 years. And the Ter Lab has reached wide research and education community. We had about 1,000 researchers uh, that used the Ter Lab in multiple projects over uh, 46 countries and I believe five continents. Um, and we had 230 classes from 147 institutions, and uh, we impacted almost 20,000 students that used the Ter Lab. Uh, we also developed Merge software. That's a software that runs uh, test beds, runs research infrastructure. We developed it in 2019, and it's built with modern open source tools uh, for large scale, high fidelity, and robust experimentation. And we've used it for four years to run, run various other test beds, including the Ter Lab. Um, we also had, uh, uh, from uh, 2019, started modernization of hardware in the Ter Lab. We got some new switches and nodes. Uh, we put merge software on the, on the Ter Lab, and we've prepared for the transition to something new and, and more exciting. And so Sphere is, continuing this process. So Sphere is going to uh, start with these uh, existing nodes in the Ter Lab and existing switches and merge software and extend it with more hardware and more software and more functionality. Um, so Sphere offers some unique uh, research capabilities. I see that someone has a question. Um, would you, uh, we, we have time. So if you wanna go ahead, Doug, and ask questions. Mm -hmm. Or can participants speak up? Or okay, not by default.
Okay, Dad, can you unmute? Or type um, in the chat. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe please type it in, Doug, and we'll get to it. Mm -hmm. I don't think, okay, yeah. Yep, thank you. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Um, so Sphere offers some unique research capabilities. Um, we hope to offer uh, new hardware that has not been available uh, broadly before to people. So uh, we will facilitate experiments with emerging technology and specialized hardware. Um, and we also hope to support realistic experimentation and people that have been in this community for a while and, and experimented with tests that know that hardware is only a small part of the picture. The bigger part is how do you set it up so that it replicates something realistic so that when you go and publish paper, uh, the reviewers don't come back and say, well, that's just toy experiment. It worked there, but why would it work in real world? And so we hope that with our uh, support for reproducibility and realistic representative experimentation environments, we will actually be able to support community in, in uh, realistic experimentation. Um, and we also hope to broaden participation in computing. We've proposed uh, uh, to fund about 20 interns each year that will be recruited from institutions that have limited uh, uh, support for uh, research and, and uh, serve minority participants, uh, participants for underrepresented communities in computing. Um, and we are starting this year. We have, since it's our first year, we have uh, nine uh, participants this year and we hope to catch up over the year so that we'll have 20 on average each year um, and they will help build the uh, build the uh, software and, and hardware of sphere and help us develop these portals and these functionalities um, and we hope that the overall impact will be faster pace of innovation in cybersecurity and privacy because there it will be easier to experiment and to build on uh, research of others and reproduce their, their results and just, just improve on that. Um, and we hope that that will enable the United States to become global leader in this area. Um, so uh, this is a little bit of uh, background for our team. So as I said, this uh, USCISI uh, built and operated the TER lab uh, for almost 20 years um, and built several additional test beds for evaluation of DARPA programs. We also developed Merge, which is the testbed management software that is now running the TerLab and is going to be running Sphere. Uh, Monitor is the lab at Northeastern. It's the biggest private lab uh, housing IoT devices. Um, and it releases uh, also data sets. Um, and it's currently just used by Northeastern University. So they are, as part of Sphere, building a new lab that will be uh, used by all, all researchers that, that use Sphere. We also had, oh, excuse me. Uh, we also had extensive work on um, developing uh, standards for scientific experimentation, let's say like that. So we've published a lot on how to do sound experiments, um, how to uh, do reproducible research. Uh, we've published on IoT privacy. Uh, we've built a catalog of cybersecurity artifacts called Search. Uh, we've built a graphical user interface for um, that supports not just building experiments, but also running experiments. So it supports what we call distributed experiment workflows or DU. Um, and we've also worked with the community. We founded the CSET workshop that's been running uh, for about, I think, 17 years now. And we've led the NSF funded study on uh, cyber experimentation of the future CEF. We also organized two workshops in 2022 to update findings of the CEF study and to understand what are the barriers to reproducibility and barriers to uh, research infrastructure use in the community. 
So we hope that Sphere will transform cybersecurity and privacy research from piecemeal and opportunistic to integrated and from reactive to proactive so that we can actually experiment with new technologies and find problems and fix them before the technology is widely adopted. Um, and we also hope to enable reproducible experimentation that is easily and remotely accessible to all US researchers. And our prior experience, experience with the Terlab shows that underserved uh, researchers from underserved communities especially benefit from this. Um, over two thirds of our users on the Lab were coming from community colleges, from small institutions, uh, from underfunded institutions where they really don't have access to this kind of uh, infrastructure. Um, and so we hope that that will be able to broaden participation in computing and to serve these communities better. Um, and we also plan to work with artifact evaluation committees. Actually, we're starting this summer working with XX artifact evaluation committee to use fear in their um, evaluation process. And we hope to reach to, uh, to other um, committees as well and work with them uh, starting this year. Uh, Yelena, we've got a question here. Yeah. Will Sphere Will Sphere reuse any existing hardware or will you be using all new hardware? If it's the latter, is it because of security, uh, for example, encryption requirements or some other reason? So we are reusing a very small portion of existing hardware. We are using 48 nodes that are general compute nodes that are newer. They were purchased in 2022, so they are still very good and, and, and useful to reuse. Um, and we're reusing some embedded compute nodes, I think about 600 of them, and then the rest will be purchased new because most of our hardware is very, very old uh, in, in the detail lab. Okay, um, and then I don't know why, why would it be because of encryption requirements, but I wanted to say that when we uh, looked at what hardware to purchase, we also kept in mind that the uh, large, there's a large community doing research on uh, weaknesses of various CPU architectures. And so we made sure to um, have CPUs from different architectures um, and to have the trusted uh, computing modules uh, with, with each so that uh, community will be able to leverage that in experimentation. Um, okay, so we hope that Sphere will increase the pace of innovation in cybersecurity and privacy and lead to more mature solutions on the market. Um, and we hope that that will in turn help protect scientific infrastructure and society from various threats. As we all know today, these threats are rampant. Ransomware we hear about every day. Uh, data theft, data corruption are also frequently in the news, supply chain attacks. Are, are also frequently in the news and very damaging. Denial of service um, is not really making big news anymore, only rarely because it usually smaller uh, targets are affected, so they don't make the front news uh, pages, but the, the, the denial of service is also quite damaging, especially to small, uh, small companies and, and education institutions that don't have enough funds to buy commercial defenses. Um, and so all these threats need better, more sophisticated solutions that exist on the market today. Uh, we also hope to help produce larger, more diverse and better educated and prepared workforce because of our support for use of Sphere in education. And what we found over the past 14 years that the Terlab has been used in education is that this has great impact on students. It really improves their, uh, their, their confidence, their um, motivation to be in this field. Um, and it gives them some practical skills that help them then transition easily to, to career, professional career. Um, and we hope to help integrate uh, cybersecurity and privacy solutions into new and emerging technologies before they get widely deployed because we are getting uh, relevant hardware and new hardware uh, in Sphere. So, and also I should say what we've planned at the beginning of the project could change with feedback from the community as new threats emerge and new hardware appears and becomes relevant to cybersecurity and privacy research, we could pivot 
and implement something new that we haven't thought of as we started the project. So feel free to give us feedback and, and we'll also monitor the market and monitor trends. Uh, we've performed extensive sphere community outreach and we plan to do more. <laughs> so we are uh, present at all major cybersecurity conferences. Uh, we've attended and presented at NSF events that are listed here. We'll be at SAT CPI meeting. We'll give a tutorial on sphere. Um, and we are going to attend other conferences and present as well um, as we build Sphere, as we build uh, IoT uh, part of it and, and cyber physical resources. And uh, we will go and attend these other specialized conferences and present there. Uh, we're also uh, planning presentations this year at T Tapia, Grace Hopper, and SACNES. Uh, these are all serving underrepresented populations in computing, and we hope to talk to them about Sphere and get some users from these communities. Um, we have a Google form that is uh, shown here, and I believe the QR code also takes you to the form. And it's a very short form. It's about, takes five minutes or less to do. Um, and it asks about your experimentation needs. What do you think is missing today? What, what can be done better? Um, are there some services that we are not foreseeing that, that you feel should be part of Sphere? So please take this survey. You can also email us directly, but you know if you take the survey, we've asked all the relevant questions there. So, so this makes sure that we get your input fully and we'll take everybody's input into account. Um, and it's anonymous and you can skip questions if you don't feel like responding to some. Uh, you can become a Sphere Beta user today. So this slide shows uh, what resources we plan to add and at what time and when they will be available for use. So all notes are available now. These are general purpose notes. So what you would be getting today are virtual machines that you can organize into custom topologies and you can experiment with them. And because you are getting virtual machines, you can get large numbers of them. Um, so now's a good time to join and to, to try this and, and tell us you know, if, if something is missing. Um, and you can see when other resources will become available. And we hope that we'll have programmable mix available in fall 2024. Um, how do you access Sphere? Just like all other research infrastructures in the community, you would log in remotely using your browser. Um, and you can, uh, currently there is a, a new username and password that you create for Sphere. But when we open in June, for broader audiences, uh, for broader, I should say, uh, beta user population, we will also support CI logon. So we're working now to integrate CI logon into our process and to uh, make sure that, that everything that we can currently do with usernames and passwords, we can do with CI logon. Um, and once you uh, want to create your experiment, you can uh, get general purpose VMs and you can connect them into custom topologies and you can control bandwidth and delay of this topology. You then access nodes using SSH uh, with sudo privileges and you can also access using Jupyter notebooks. Um, you currently are, would be able to reach into internet and we can support some limited incoming connections too um, and we'll work with you. So if you have some need that is not currently met, we are currently very responsive because we have very small beta use, user community and, and we are um, committed to support uh, research use. We have chat-based user support, so it's very easy to reach us. Um, how can you help with Sphere? Uh, researchers can use Sphere to conduct new uh, research or test research solutions. Faculty and students can use Sphere for education. Actually, we transitioned all the Terlab users to beta users of Sphere, and we currently have about 100 or so researchers, and we have about 1,000 students per semester that use us. So feel free if you want to use us in classes. We love that. Um, and IT staff could use Sphere to test and evaluate new solutions and new technologies. 
Um, so thank you. These are uh, this is the link to our uh, Sphere project that gives more information about the project. Uh, and there's an email uh, if you want to contact us, and I'll open for questions. Great. I will grab the screen momentarily so that we can go over some community updates and then um, get to questions. Mm -hmm. So. Um, thanks everyone for attending today's webinar. Um, I have a few community updates before we just go through the chat. Uh, one is that the next webinar is May 20th at 11 a.m. Eastern. Our topic is the NSF uh, Research Infrastructure Guide, Infrastructure Guide, or also known as the RIG, if you've heard about that. Our presenter is Mike Korn from NSF. Um, you can learn more about our webinars at trustedci.org. And then um, the Trusted CI uh, NSF Cybersecurity Summit is coming up in October. It, it will be at Pittsburgh um, at Carnegie Mellon University. And um, we will be announcing the student program call for applications uh, very soon, actually. Um, so please be on the lookout for that if you have any student uh, mentees that you would like to um, share that information with we will hopefully be sending a, um, a call for applications very soon. And with that, let's go through some questions here. So uh, we've got one more question here. Is is there any option to run negative negatively vice in VMs such as in batch natively. jobs? Yeah, natively. Natively, yes. You oh, can, natively, uh, sorry, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can, uh, you can, I believe that this is the question, do I have to use a VM or can I use a physical node? You can request a physical node as well um, and, and run on that instead of on VM. It's just that we found that, that many, many users want VMs and they are faster to set up and, and easier to, um, you know, reset if you if you did that. Any Maybe more questions? Oh. <clears throat> I believe Dave wanted to mention that we are also participated in Trusted CI. So Dave, do you wanna uh, speak a little about that? Yes, thanks, uh, Jana. So yes, yeah, since this is a Trusted CI webinar and uh, uh, mainly Trusted CI audience, I did wanna mention that we uh, are familiar with the Trusted CI framework and we're invited to be part of the current cohort, Cohort ECHO. And so Sphere, like many other NSF funded research infrastructures is uh, going through uh, the process of understanding the Trusted CI framework 16 musts and doing a self-assessment through a discovery record to assess where we stand relative to those 16 musts. And uh, we are now transitioning from doing that self-assessment to uh, developing a uh, cybersecurity strategic plan. Uh, as part of the proposed effort, we already had a small task to, to bring cybersecurity into the research infrastructure. And of course, as cybersecurity researchers uh, over the years, uh, we're all very familiar with a lot of uh, simple uh, cybersecurity uh, controls and protection mechanisms. And so Yelena and the development and operations team are including cybersecurity measures into everything that uh, they are developing and operating, uh, but it's actually very good to go through uh, the more formal process and follow the framework. And uh, we really appreciate the, the uh, support we've received from uh, the trusted CI team and, and the ability to, to go through this more formal and rigorous process. Um, we've got another, yeah, another question here. Does Sphere support HIPAA compliance or encryption at rest and or in flight? Um, so we uh, currently are not uh, looking to, to support HIPAA compliance. That could change, but I think that, you know, we are an open test bed uh, and, and, you know, uh, it, it would be hard. There are a lot of sh there's a lot of shared infrastructure, and while we have basic uh, protections so that no one can touch your data, uh, we still would need to do way more. I think to to guarantee uh, that we are good enough for HIPAA protected data. 
So yeah. maybe in the future, right now, I think I think we're we're not. Yeah, and I guess I would want to learn more about the, the requirement for HIPAA compliance and understand where and how that might be necessary and, and would need to apply to the research infrastructure. Uh, certainly, if you're if you're subject to HIPAA compliance and you're developing technologies that will work in, in HIPAA compliant environments, you can use the Sphere infrastructure uh, to do that and you can incorporate and apply the appropriate requirements into your into your experiment and, and you know, testing that you may be performing on the infrastructure. Right. I think that the that this arises mostly in the case you want to store data that is HIPAA protected and um, and use that in your calculations on Sphere. Um, and I think we have the foundations that could take us there in the future, but we're not there yet. I'll also mention that we're working with a lot of researchers in the community that are looking at privacy enhancing technologies or pets. And so this includes things like uh, fully homomorphic encryption and multi-party computation. Uh, and the Sphere infrastructure can certainly support uh, research and uh, other you know, operational uh, prototyping and testing of such technologies. And I want to give shout out to, to Terry Flory, who's here on the, in the audience. So thank you for your support of uh, CI Logon. You were very helpful when I was installing <laughs> some other infrastructure. So we are looking forward to, to put it on Sphere as well. Um, Doug, I think you unmuted. Did you have a question? And Terry waved back. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. okay. So I can also hear if you guys have any feedback. Again, if you don't want to speak up now, email us or or take the survey. That would really help us. Uh, the survey is also on our web page. So if you go there, you can access it. It's really short. Okay, well, I think with that, we will wrap things up. So thank you all for attending today's webinar. Um, I will be uh, recording or cutting this recording and posting it to our YouTube channel uh, probably later today within the day. And so if you want to share it with your colleagues, please be on the lookout for that. And uh, I want to say one more time, David and Yelena, thank you for attending and presenting. Do you have any final comments? Oh, thank you. We, we've enjoyed talking with with your audience and uh, we look forward to more trusted CI webinars that we can attend. Indeed, yeah. thank you for inviting us and we appreciate all the support we get through Trusted CI and look forward to interacting with you and the rest of the Trusted CI team and the, the larger community at the conferences and other NSF events, including the uh, Cybersecurity Summit later this year. Great. Well, with that, I will wrap things up. Uh, everybody have a great day and we'll see you next month. Bye. Great. Thank you. Bye-bye.